Another very important form is the vortex or the spiral, which represents in, almost throughout the world the tunnel or the entrance to the spirit world. So that going through the vortex, the shaman then comes out on the other side in a completely new spiritual realm. It's very different from having uh, wishful fantasies or, or um, be doing some daydreaming. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a, literally, it's an inner uh, travel comparable to the space travel. Pioneering consciousness researcher Stanislav Grof has spent more than four decades researching the science of the ancient shamans. He says shamans also used breathing techniques to alter their consciousness. He teaches modern travelers to produce a mild form of oxygen deprivation in the brain, similar to that experienced by climbers at high altitudes. Graf believes the non-ordinary states this can produce were a fundamental part of all ancient cultures. The Western industrial civilization is really the only group of uh, people throughout human history that does not uh, hold the non-ordinary states uh, in high esteem. Every other group sort of uh, uh, a tremendous appreciation of these states and they spend a lot of uh, time and uh, energy trying to develop very safe and uh, effective ways of, of uh, inducing these non-ordinary states. Human consciousness remains largely a mystery to science. It's believed our awareness comes from a complex interaction between sensory signals, memories and the subconscious mind. Groff and others argue the subconscious plays a more powerful role than we imagine. That we use it to develop ideas. And through the ages, our ancestors used it to develop human intelligence. The ideas, the inspiration that can come from an ordinary state can help later when the person returns into the ordinary state, you know, to uh, substantially improve one's uh, way of being in the world. Advocates of this theory suggest inspirational ideas can come from a transpersonal realm, hidden from everyday awareness. That the dreamlike imagery in altered states often contains solutions to the questions on our minds. Many people in the transpersonal field feel that uh, all genuine, really deep creativity comes from the transpersonal realms. Obviously you have to do your homework, I mean you have to sort of uh, uh, consume somehow the, the information of a particular discipline, you have to be aware of the problems, you have to, you have to define them very clearly, but the solution very frequently comes uh, in an unordinary state.